Um, so you're like, you're insanely close to the answer and I can see you've kind of incorporated what people have been telling you in the Discord chat, but like you're just slightly off with some of the syntax and you have a scope issue, if that makes sense. Um, uh, I don't know, go ahead. Okay, no, no, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like I came into your GitHub, I cleaned it up a little bit in my own and made sure I could run and I can explain this like easily. Um, if you want, I can just clone into your repo and share my screen. That way you can just watch what I'm doing. And I'll kind of like talk and walk through as I go through it. And like, you know, you feel free to pause and ask me any questions along the way and I'll do my best to interpret things for you. Um, I actually went through this program myself back in January and I got a job here as an instructor and I'm really excited. I can also totally relate to the struggle of someone that's trying to go from nothing where I started yeah. and all of a sudden up to here where I'm coding like an iOS app for this company, which is super cool. So like, you know, I, I progressed a ton in that same amount of time. So this, this content is awesome. So it's really cool seeing someone else go through the same steps that I did. Yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm really excited to help because you're my first one-to-one uh, -one as well. Perfect. Did you have an option to pick which covalence instructor or was my name the only one available? No, it, uh, I didn't get that option. I'm not sure. Okay, so I guess I just picked whoever had the most available schedule, which would be me because it's totally open. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Um, let's see how to do this. Share. I'm going to share my desktop real quick. Okay, and you see my uh, Discord right now and then my terminal? Yeah. Okay, super cool. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just jump on into your repo here. That way I can work out of your code to make it more sense. So this is just the GitHub repository. It's a quick way to clone into a project, which you'll end up using this a lot as you progress through the course. We're going to go into the directory I named helping students, and then we're going to clone your repo. We're going to jump into that directory. We called it JS. There we go. Open my code editor. And yeah, there is your stuff, right? Yeah. And is this where you're having the issues with this test.js? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't know if you're, I mean, are you currently like opening your index.html into the Google Chrome and opening the console that way to yeah. test your code? Okay, cool. So we'll do that because there's a couple different ways you can actually do it. If you are interested, um, I think in the onboarding process, you had to install Node.js. Is that correct? Not in the onboarding, no. Okay, I'll look into that for you. But once you install Node, if you have your terminal, I, also, are you on a PC, uh, Windows machine, or are you on a Mac? Windows. Okay, cool. Um, so you'd have this, you'd open up your command prompt and then be able to type in Node version. And if you have a version popping up, if you have it installed, um, I can send you a link on where to install it. You can actually run a node on your JavaScript files, like on your scripts, and it gives you a console right then and there. Oh. That's just another quick way to do it. And that's what I ended up doing later in the program. But because you're doing it this way, we're going to mimic exactly what you're doing to make sure it's easy. Oop, button, reveal and finder. So we're going to open up your index page. We're going to open up the developer tools. And since that's all we're going to be really seeing, let's just make it pretty much the width of the screen. So this is the area you've been getting, right? Well, I've been or, playing with it, and that one yeah. for nothing. <laughs> right on. Um, so yeah, th this one is saying, you know, check age is not defined. So going back to your test JS, um, it's saying it's not defined because right here where you're calling it in your for loop, um, you have a scope problem. Are you familiar with that term in JavaScript? Vaguely. Vaguely, I okay. Was, I skipped ahead hoping I would get some answers, but. <laughs> the, the program builds upon itself really well. Um, looking at the code you currently have, you could probably just like quickly glance over the initial stuff and probably be, be caught up in no time to make sure you didn't really miss anything. As I said, you're, you're, I like the way you're coding. Everything you have like in your over here is looking good and pretty much exactly where you need to be at this point in the course. Like, so great job so far, by the way. Um, so what's happening here is you've, like, you've defined check age as a callback function inside of this for each loop. Now, this thing is actually achieving the exact same thing as this for loop is. So I know like someone mentioned you can use this in yeah. Discord. Um, for now, 
like I didn't start using this until later in the program and it made sense to me. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep your check age function in there, but we're going to get rid of the for each that uh, wrapped it up. I'll make sure I get the curly braces done right. Okay, cool. Because um, what was happening, it was running inside that for each, and then when you call it down here, it didn't know what it was because it was only defined in the scope of that particular thing you had written. So that was a local scope issue. So anything inside here where your original for each was, it would know what check age is because you defined it. But anything else outside of that in your program would not know what check age was at all because it's only defined locally and not globally. Uh, in contrast, what you created up here, your array of objects, um, it is on the global scope meaning anything in the rest of your program down here could find out what list is and know what it is because it's defined globally. Now, let's say, for example, we move list down inside of here. Um, it would then be on a local scope scale, which means anything inside here would know what it is, but back outside of it, it wouldn't know. Um, and you will run into this issue many a times in your programming career. I was literally dealing with it yesterday in the React Native app I'm trying to program. And all of a sudden I realized I had a scope issue, took something out and everything started running. And it was like four hours of agonizing debugging to figure that out. So like this, this is just a universal problem that you will have as a programmer. So I, you know, the course is designed this way to you, most folks probably run into this just like this in order to learn what scope is. Um, so yeah, your, your logic is pretty much there. It's just a matter of, uh, fixing the scope issue and making sure things are defined properly. Um, so the easiest way to define a function in current JavaScript is just calling function, the function name, you know, you can call it whatever you want. Yeah, um, I started with, and then I was just playing with ideas they were throwing at me on those. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, you know, some of the alumni, like the people that have blue in their names that finish the course will like, try and be like, oh, I, I, you can do a for each. That's what I would do these days because they've graduated the course and they know how all this stuff functions. So sometimes it's difficult for them to remember what it's like from someone that's just starting out. So like, it, like I can show you how to make it work with for each, but this is, the, this is like the bare bones way to get it working. And then we can do some like advanced stuff later if you're interested. Like I said, I don't mind. Um, I know you paid for an hour, but if you want to go over, I'm just really excited to help somebody. So <laughs> like I said, you're my first, you're my first one. So like, I'm like over, overly excited to be talking and helping with you. Um, yeah. So like, you know, you, you declare the function, you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't have to be check age. I mean, we can call it check pizza age if you want to. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like you, you call it, define it, what do you want? And it's the same thing with these parameters. You know, they say make a function check age that takes a name and an age. So you did that correctly. And again, you can name these whatever you want, as long as you're consistent inside the function itself, right? Um, so it takes a name and an age, cool. So that's all set up and good to go. And the logic in here, you're doing pretty much correctly. Um, uh, the point is to console log if someone is under 21 or is over 21, correct? Yeah. So we don't, really we don't really care about what their name is in the conditional. Their name is not important oh. if, we uh, are checking for an age, so that's unnecessary. And so, like you said, your, your logic is pretty much right there. If they're under 21, uh, you concatenate a string with the name passed to the function, is not yet 21, or if they are over 21, then we call that. So like I said, you are pretty much on, on point right there. So that's, that's what our uh, check age function is gonna be. This runs a quick if else statement with a console log, depending on whatever we pass to it, we'll, We'll go through this logic and spit out that stuff. I'm pretty sure that's correct. We'll find out in a minute. <laughs> so down here, you're um, in your for loop. Uh, you're familiar with how this works. I know it looks like you had it, and you also had a do while loop back in your app that was pretty cool. I haven't seen someone do that since old school Java. Do you have any kind of programming background at all or like knowledge? I did a little bit in school, but very okay. little. I don't think I ever really got into JavaScript. Cool. Whatever code they were running on their little robots they had. <laughs> That's awesome. That's super cool. So yeah, like you know, it looks like you have a, a it looks like you had a cursor understanding because no one in my classes has done a do while before. So when I saw that, I definitely had a smile on my face that someone had a bit of knowledge coming into this. So this for loop is going to run is going to iterate through parameters that we define it as, which you did correctly. Um, we have an iterating variable which typically you define inside there. 
and it's also like a local, again, it's a locally defined thing. So I will work anywhere inside these brackets, but if you try and console log I out here, um, it won't work because it's a, it's looking for a global I, which doesn't exist because it's only local. So that's another little fun lesson on scope there. That way you can have multiple for loops outside of each other all saying let I equal zero and not have to worry about them having issues running into each other. You won't have to define a bunch of different letters as iterating variables. But that changes if you have nested for loops. So if you have an outside for loop and an inside for loop, then you're in local scope again. So the next one inside here, for example, like if we had a secondary loop, we'd have to do a let J equals zero because I is already defined. Does that make sense on like a local scope level? Okay, cool, yeah. Um, and the iterating, iterating a variable is going to run as long as your array dot length. So you have it John, right there, Johnny in the spot, correct, looking good. It's gonna increment by one, so that's perfect. Like your logic was flawless right there. Um, it's saying my internet connection is unstable. Am I still coming in pretty solid? You glitch out every once in a while. Okay, well, there's, like, feel free just to interject right away if there's any point that like it glitches and I'm explaining something. And you okay. need to like, hold on, hold on, yeah. Like I said, feel free to interject whenever you like. Um, so inside here, it's gonna look for check age. And at this point, we do have it defined on a global scale. So it's gonna know exactly what the check age function is, right? Um, and then this is where, it took me a little bit to figure out as well at the time. And like you're just about there. So we have to pass in a name and an age just like we defined up here. And we have to pass in a specific name and age from the list of objects. Like there's one object, there's a second one, third one, et cetera, et cetera. We have to hand in each one. Um, I didn't look through your app.js that carefully. Did you have a point where you were looking through positions in, a, in an array? Like have you gone over syntax that looks like this or no? Okay, so let's, let's, uh, and I'm familiar with how to do it. Okay. So let's just, but I haven't actually typed one out yet. No problem. So we're just going to take out this for loop for now. We're not going to worry about that. Nothing's going to, nothing's going to run here because it's just a declaration and it doesn't matter. Um, so we're going to console log list and these are two brackets and the number zero, meaning, and that the number right there is actually the index of where you are on the array. It defines which like identification, so to speak, I put that in quotes, so that's not right, but like which position you are in the array. Because everything has a position. This one is zero, that's where it starts yeah. counting. This one's one, two, et cetera, et cetera. So this syntax right here is something you can do in JavaScript where you have an array and then define what position in the array you want information from. So if we console log that, come back here and refresh, we get Jesse age 25 and that is indeed position zero, yeah. right? And so, yeah, yeah, it's really, it's really, really handy. Um, you're going to be do using it a lot as you go through more JavaScript and into the advanced territory. Um, and something else that's really cool about JavaScript is you can use object notation, meaning position zero, aka the first spot, <laughs> um, is Jesse age 25. And position zero, aka spot one, has both a name and age inside the object. So we can actually sure even more information if you want to. So at list position zero, let's say we want the name of the person. We can actually do that as our new syntax. So that goes, look at the array list at index position zero and look at the key value name or the key name and spit out the value. And so if you come back to our console and refresh, we just get Jesse. And it also works for age. Let's put that in a new line for you. Uh, list position zero dot age. Okay, cool. What is, so that should get us 25 when we refresh, right? Yeah. Bam, got it. So that is how you kind of like destructure at each position on how to get a name and an age. And so with that information in mind, we can actually pass something similar back up into our for loop to get the information we're looking for. So like instead of just name right here, we would need the position where we are in the array, name, and the same thing for this guy. So instead of just age, we're passing in the specific age of where we are in this array. Now, we have a variable right here that's counting up 
in the exact same position in the array up until its length ends for us. And that little guy right there is going to define where we are in the array. So like, you know, this thing will start at zero and it goes, okay, position zero, we have Jesse, 25. Then I'll count up one and go to I equals one. And at position one, we have list position one dot name is Dana, list position one dot age is 21 and so on and so forth. Does that make sense? Yeah, excellent. So we're gonna get rid of those empty console logs. We have the for loop uncommented. Um, so it should run this function pass in the appropriate name and age, and we should get um, your console logs right here spitting out correctly. So let's run her and see what happens. All right. Yay. So Mal 